All right, guys, so a really popular topic, comment, and question always seems to prevail in the um, like knife forums, whether that's on Facebook, Reddit, anywhere you go with the knife world. And it kind of is this persistent ask of why shouldn't you own gas station knives? I and mean, what essentially that means is just super cheap, super inexpensive knives that uh, may or may not be built well, usually aren't built too well usually aren't built too well, not to the highest standards, using the best materials and processing. So first off, before we get into why you shouldn't, I really think it's more important to take a look at a couple reasons of why you should actually buy gas station knives. And I think that this will help fully kind of answer, like if you can answer why you shouldn't, then that gives you a better understanding of why you should. So yeah, I think the first and most important thing is there are a few reasons why you might actually want a gas station knife. The first of them probably being the disposability of the blade. And this goes for just in general, not so much a physical disposable blade, like something you can throw away and still retain the knife, but having a knife for times where either an application will likely destroy the knife outright, like say you're you know cutting a whole bunch of bags of gravel, right? If you have a cheap knife or an expensive knife, either one of them is likely going to get destroyed, right? So in those types of situations, it makes some degree of sense to go with a cheaper knife that is physically disposable because it will likely be destroyed by the particular task. In addition, this might be another type of situation where, say, you're in an environment that is highly corrosive and that knife might, might get destroyed either way, you know, like whether it's expensive or cheap. So in those types of situations, you know, having a more a uh, cheap knife, gas station knife, so to speak, can be applicable. I think another one too for me is travel. Now, I don't necessarily do a lot of international or really any international travel, but it does come up every so often that if you travel internationally, it's not a half bad idea to get something that is just super cheap, super disposable, super throwaway. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be a physical gas station knife, but Getting a cheaper, like, cold steel, Civivi, um knife that is 100%, you know, like, um, you're, something you're not going to cry about if it gets taken away is a really good idea. Now, I will say, of course, if you're ever traveling, of you want to keep in mind, you know, your local laws to wherever you're visiting. Like, if you're going to South America, the knife laws are pretty lax. Most things are pretty lax in general. But if you're going to Europe, you know, it, obviously the laws are going to be a little bit more stringent. And of course, the police will be a little bit more dutiful in upholding those knife laws. So bear that in mind. And I'm not trying to say this is like, you know, go out and become a felon in another country because that's really, really bad. But, you know, when you are traveling abroad, having something that is throwaway can be very handy, especially for places like South America, where once again, the laws are kind of a little bit more relaxed and the law enforcement's a little bit more relaxed. And honestly, your potential to use a defensive knife will increase in those types of situations and environments. So anyways, those are some big reasons. The disposability and the overall carefree nature of cheaper knives makes them an asset. Now let's talk about some of the reasons why you don't want a gas station knife. I think some of the biggest reasons why is once again going back to that disposability. At the core, cheap knives are designed to be throwaways. They are designed to break down instead of break in. I've done some shorts and I've talked about this before, but realistically that's the biggest difference between a cheap knife and an expensive knife, especially when it comes to something like a folding knife um, or an automatic or anything that's a little bit more mechanically advanced a fixed blade is that something like let's just say this Chris Reeve in large and cozy is going to break in it's going to become better the more you use it whereas a cheaper knife will become worse the more you use it like it's going to physically degrade and eventually break down and so that's one of the biggest uh, things and clarifications when it comes to uh, cheaper gas station knives is that that disposability mentality never leaves those blades now unfortunately some of them do have really cool designs and some of them a lot of them are ripped off from nicer knives like once again you will see a lot of clones of things like strider smgs um chris reeve knives and kosi sabenza umnumzon basically any good knife out there even things like griptilians have been knocked off you know by cheap gas station imitators 
for decades. And once again, that really comes back to the fact that what it means is that these are good designs. They're taking them, they're ripping them off, and they're trying to incorporate those into cheaper designs because they don't have to pay royalties in China. So things like that are important to note, but by and large, um, the ergonomics will not be there. And I think that really goes back to the fact that largely or generally speaking, when you have a cheaper knife like a or when you have a more expensive knife like this in Kosi, the big difference is that these types of knives are designed by people who know what knives are and know how to make a good knife. And when you have knives that are, you know, um, cheaper, they're just knocking things off. They don't actually understand how to design a good knife. It's kind of like uh, if you buy any of those cheaper full electric vehicles straight from China, like the K trucks or Kai trucks, whatever you want to call them. Those things are oftentimes really poor quality because the people who design vehicles get paid a lot of money to design vehicles. And so it is honestly something that's kind of like slept on, but kind of important to know that, you know, honestly, like good design goes a very long way. In addition to what's also worth noting is the quality of materials. Obviously, something you know you can buy more expensive knives and more expensive tools as a rule that are poorly crafted or made of poor materials, but by and large, when you buy more expensive knives, tools, you're paying for the design and you're paying for the materials. Now, materials gets a little bit more dicey, especially with knives, because once again, as I've talked about with steel, you know, you may never use magna cut to its highest, you know, possibility of corrosion resistance, right? Especially where I live, you know, it's a very, very dry environment in central Alaska. So honestly, like, I'm never going to see the full potential of the corrosion resistance of Magna Cut, right? So it's not necessarily always important to have the most high-performing steels, but at the same time, too, you know, oftentimes cheap knives, like gas station knives, are just going to be made with any type of steel. Oftentimes 420J2 or very, very cheap stainless steels that are going to be reasonably corrosion resistant but have very poor edge, res edge retention, very poor toughness, things like that that just won't last. And once again, it goes back to that disposability nature that once again, the makers of these gas station knives aren't really intending for you to sharpen the knife after it's used. It's basically just designed to be thrown away. And so once again, if that's what you need, then one of these knives or a gas station knife does make a lot of sense. However, you also don't want to try to put lipstick on a pig. And I think we kind of saw that more as a joke when the, um, gosh, I'm trying to remember what the Walmart brand is called, but when the Walmart brand made basically a axis lock um, folding knife and um, totally blanking on the name of it, but a lot of people, you know, did fun things with them, you know, reprofiled the edges, put good edges on them and stuff like that. And it's like, ultimately you're putting lipstick on a pig where, you know, the performance gains aren't really going to be there. At the end of the day, you still have a pig. You don't really have, you know, anything better than that. So, you know, you can make it look good. Good, but it's only ever going to still be marginal. And once again, things like edge retention will really never be there. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this kind of breakdown of gas station knives. I do think they make sense in certain applications, and I will say, especially, I think they make the most sense. And unfortunately, kind of like as a pro and gone in reality is, you know, you see a lot of these cheaper knives being used by bad people to do bad things. But at the same time, too, I think that's the biggest draw to cheap gas station knives is like defensive use, using them in a defensive manner because they're cheap, they're disposable, they are something you're not going to cry about if it gets taken or goes missing. It's something that, you know, you can use to defend yourself because regardless to whether a piece of steel is 420 or, you know, Magna Cut, it's still going to go through soft materials, if you catch my drift, with good ease. So that's the biggest thing where I usually, you know, employ cheaper knives is just in straight up defensive use or applications. And once again, I think Gold Steel does a pretty good job at bringing a lot of lower price point, lower quality um, knives that are strictly for self-defense. So anyways, guys, that's my perspective. That's my out outlook on it or my take on cheap knives, gas station knives. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.